Hello everyone, today is day 14 of our 30 days of watercolor flowers and today we are painting hollyhocks. Hollyhocks are a type of flower that are shaped like a trumpet. So they have a really large circular flower petal that almost looks like one single petal and then they have a center that comes back to a main stem in a trumpet shape. So this one we're looking at from the front and we're going to add some veining. Hollyhocks have this beautiful veining on the petals, but it will also help give the illusion that the hollyhock is curved from the outer petals down into the center where it trumpets out. And then this one over here to the right, we are going to add a little bit of a tail to show that trumpet. So we're seeing this one a little bit more from the side. So the circular petals that are closer to us are going to be shorter to give that illusion. Hollyhocks are on a main stem and have lots of flowers coming off. And so we're going to be doing lots of different flowers and also a lot of big buds off the main stem because there are these big, beautiful, round, bulbous bud shapes all along the hollyhock stem. They also have these really big leaves, really big leaves as you get down to the bottom. We're not going to get to the point where we're painting the biggest leaves, but we will do a few big leaves um, to accentuate the greenery of the hollyhocks. I'm mixing up a very light pink for our hollyhock color, taking paint from my palette and mixing it with water to dilute it so it's not very strong. I'm using my brush with pretty heavy pressure to make these swoopy motions around in a circle to create the fluffy petal of the hollyhock, leaving the center very wide open and empty. You really want to make sure that the petals are really fluffy and wavy on the edges. And we are not adding any white space in between because we do want it to have that trumpet look where it is all one petal. I dabbed my brush on my paper towel and took a little bit of that pigment out just to get a highlighted area. And then I picked up some very bright pink and added it on the edges while everything was still wet to get a nice little detail in the flower. When you're trying to get watercolor to bleed, but you don't want it to completely take over the color, make sure that the main color, like our light pink, is not too wet. And then make sure that the color you're trying to add is very pigmented and has less water. So I also did that with the orange around the center. One of the tricks to mastering this flower is using the other end of your brush to create the veining in the flower petal. The reason this is so important is it creates that curve that we need to understand visually that this flower is a trumpet shape, that the petals are coming out, but that it's really curving down into the center. This flower we're painting on top, we are seeing more from the side. And so the petals are a little bit flatter, meaning we're going to paint them a little bit thinner and less conspicuous. The petals on the opposite side, on the right side, are going to be bigger and fuller. And having this difference in size shape will make it so that visually we are knowing that we're looking at it from the side. Then we're going to add in some of that bright pink again while it is still wet. And then we're going to pick up some of the orange and add that to the center while it is still wet. We're just lightly dabbing in this color because we don't want it to overtake the whole flower, but we want it to accent that beautiful center as it's going down into a trumpet shape. And then we're going to add a little triangle on the back to represent that trumpet shape connecting to the stem. And then we're going to go back while everything is still wet to the main part of the petals and use the other side of our brush to put in those curves to give it that nice illusion that the trumpet is going down into the center. As I'm placing these flowers, I'm keeping in mind that center stalk that is right in the middle, the stem that all of these flowers are going to be on, and these two main flowers that we're not going to see the side of the trumpet. So really having the one on the right that is kind of a side view is just going to help visually 
the viewer understand that all of these flowers are trumpet shaped and they're attached to a big main stem. And if you've ever seen hollyhocks in person or a reference picture, the flower petals are so delicate and that's one of the reasons we want to keep it nice and wavy on the edge because it does give us the idea of movement and these really roughly light petals. When we use the other end of our brush to create the curves on the flower, we are using very light pressure to push into the paper so that some of the pigment can fall into that indentation and color it a little bit darker. It creates a very natural veining. So you really just need to play around with the idea of how to create a C shape curving from the center all the way to the edge of the petals to give it that curvy illusion that you want and give it that real trumpet feel. I added just a dot of bright yellow to each of the centers and we're going to let that all dry so that we don't get a lot of bleeding when we finish off the centers. So now I am mixing up a green using yellow ochre and sap green which is my favorite color combination for greenery on flowers and I'm just starting by placing that center stem and quickly attaching that trumpet that we can see from the side with some of that greenery. Along the stem I'm going to create some circular shapes for the green buds that are going to be sticking out. Leave a little bit of white space for a highlight. It'll give it a little bit more depth instead of looking flat. And then I'm using my two stroke leaf method where I do light pressure at the beginning, push down to create the body of the leaf, bring light pressure up for the tip, and then do that again on the other side, leaving some white space in the center for the middle vein. When you're doing loose style watercolor, not everything has to connect or be perfectly symmetrical. You can have shapes that are disconnected and disjointed and it will add to the illusion of the flower and the looseness of it. Now we're going to bring the main stem up to the top end. Now the top has little tiny bits of greenery and lots of buds because that's where more flowers are getting ready to blossom. Remember that when you're creating these buds, they don't have to be perfectly circular. They can be a little lumpy. They can have a little bit of white space. Whenever you can make it more uneven, it leads to movement, which makes it look more organic. And then as things dry, I'm just using that same green on my brush to go in and add some color to the other leaves. Now I'm mixing up a little bit darker green by adding some indigo and popping that into the greenery while everything is still wet. It gives a nice soft um, dimension because the colors are bleeding together instead of having the harsh lines, but it's not quite as flat as having just one color. Now we're going to let the greenery dry and we are going to continue to work on the centers of the hollyhock flowers. I've mixed up some green with the yellow on the palette for a bright yellow green and I am just dotting this in around where we've placed that yellow circle center in the middle of the hollyhocks. And I'm just lightly tapping this color in. You don't necessarily want to lose the white space that you've created and you don't want to overwhelm the yellow center. You just kind of want to ring it around um, and have a little bit of white space so that you can still see the texture. And then I went in with some dark yellow ochre to give a little bit more dimension to that yellow center by just placing a few dots below the bright yellow center that we had already created. Now I've just mixed up a slightly darker bright yellow green to add even more depth within that bright green dotted circle that we've done around the yellow center. Anytime you can create the variation in watercolor with light, medium, and dark values, your watercolor will just pop. It will be so much more dimensional. So now we're going in with a darker blue green. I've added a little bit more blue to the green to add contrast to our leaves. So we have light and mid-tones already and now we get to go in and just add a couple of areas with this darker contrasting color to place shadows and give it a little bit more texture. And with those final details our hollyhocks are 
finished. So now we get to add them to the day 14 spot on our watercolor flower chart. And I just really love how different this flower is with the trumpeting and the veins on the beautiful stem. Thank you so much for being here today while we painted day 14, the hollyhock. I will see you all tomorrow for day 15. Bye.